properties online, right? They'll show up when they show up. You'll get a uh, a sound. Well, right, it's a sound. Okay. Uh, well, call me in the order at uh, 631 of the, where we are, we are the emergency service, emergency services facilities building committee. Well, um, first order of business, uh, I didn't look at the minutes. I guess they're posted online now. I yep. think, uh, but I didn't read them. I thought I have to print them out so we can approve them all. So yeah, I'm going to send them out too. Just okay. send it out. Yeah, you know, well, a lot of work being shared. I'll be signed 10th. I got minutes. All right. So, uh, Mike set out the RFP. I think everybody got it. Um, I guess we can talk about it. Ralph, you want to take the lead on that since. Uh, Not really, but I will. Well, let's go for it. Um, I went through and, and just it was formatting. Uh, and, and some wording that I wasn't too uh, thrilled about. Well, what, what was the wording that you didn't like? First page. Uh, well, it's a it, it, minor tweaks. Yeah. Um, I know you're very ridiculous. We know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a problem like that. Mm -hmm. Town of Wellington, located in Town County, Northeast Corner, Connecticut. Wellington has a current population of approximately 55. So I added the word current. That paragraph needs a period at the end. Um, Second page, top paragraph. Uh, I, I kind of reorganized it a little bit so that the uh, acronyms get placed better. I don't think I have a real problem with acronyms, but uh, and they need to be defined. And Tyler, you can, and any one of you guys can jump in on this. What's BLS stand for? Basic life support. Yeah. Okay. In the industry, they don't know what that means. Yes, but. One of the final pages on this wants this to be understood by civilians. Yeah, so you can, which is why I think it's important yeah. to, to the, spell the, these the, things out, sure. mm -hmm. at least the first occurrence. Right. right. Put yeah. the right yeah. sense. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple other places where that happens. Yeah, we're adding up for that. Did you pass it on the mic already or no? Yeah, I. But there should be a table in there for the So, we're in 2000, 2010, 
There's always We left them off. Since the money was allocated for research and analysis, the fact that we have this, this ask now for this money for research and analysis, that seemed to go, I thought, fairly smoothly. The, the hang-up was we want to take research and analysis money and transfer that into buying something. That seems to be causing more tension within the room. Uh, so I think, to answer your question, that if we can get this out and get a dollar figure back quickly, we could probably get the money to get it moving. I, I think. Does that know between board of finance meetings, town meetings, selectments meetings? Correct. How many steps do we have to take and what timeline? Uh, that's a great question. Um, Does that affect the timeline you're trying to publish in this RFP? Yes. Oh, we want you to start you know, January 1 and we don't get the money until February. That's right. No, you're right. That's, right. Right. that's a good point. Um, Well, again, the, the RFP, we probably won't be able to get any money until we actually have a formal proposal with a dollar figure attached. So regardless of what, which means it's to select a vendor. Right, but it should be like available-ish. Yeah. That's what it's for. So. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I, I don't know if it has to. 
I mean, I, I, at least my, my, uh, my interpretation of what Mike was saying is that it's kind of a, just a price tag. It isn't like a run on sentence where you don't know what you're going to get, or it's got an a la carte menu. You buy a thing and you pay a dollar amount and you get that. I don't know if that's exactly true. But it comes in. Yeah. So that it's, it uh, may not. Right. We don't know. Um, I looked at it. I don't know enough. I don't. I don't know enough about this subject to know whether or not that's a good RFP or not. Um, Ralph seemed to go over it pretty well. I mean, I, 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 I think it's a, yes. a, a standard. Topic. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I was to make a motion, I'd make a motion that we let Ralph and Mike hash it out as far as verbiage, semantics, wording, and I'm comfortable with that. This is well. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> well, well, no. I, yeah, please. One comment. It sounds like you're concerned about the price coming in variable or fixed. Can you just stipulate in the RFP that it's going to be a fixed price? I don't. I don't know enough about that to answer your question. To tell you. They they should be. I mean, they should go through that and say it's going to take this many hours times how much we charge. It yeah. should be just a number at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just saying that's a concern for the board of finance. Yeah. It's stipulate it's got to be a fixed amount. Yeah, the way uh, Mr. McCool presented this was that these. Station location studies have a price tag of twenty nine thousand so nine hundred dollars. Yeah, so I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, I maintain that it was on the uh, federal contract. So right, it's, it's a standard. It's okay. throughout the country. Um, so well, that, we'll see how they come in. Yeah, that's kind of what we're launching off of. Is that it's that it's a standard report. Okay. Question, Andrew: but Are RFPs asking for more than just that? Uh, station lists, uh, map study, right? Or I, we asked Mike that last. Sorry, we asked Mike that last was time. So it, seemed like asking... it was a robust RFP, is, and yeah. he said he got um, borrowed heavily from other RFPs that were looking for that that filled the criteria of the standardized study. Right. <clears throat> so he his intention was not to get more than that. He thought it was the same as the RFPs that were requesting and got that standardized study. Yeah, I think or, so. Or, I thought, if anything, we're going to ask for less. Like, we didn't really need the town histories right. in there. We right. didn't feel that was very valuable to us because we didn't right. know the town history. Keep the flow. They all start with that. This is Wellington, and all the while, they're like, you know what? We've got all that demographic. We don't really, that's, that's not going to, we're not going to learn anything from their interpretation. Why pay them for that? We can do that on our own. So, I'll make a motion that uh, we, um, Saddle Ralph with the with working with Mike on the revisions and, and improvements and whatever they decide, we should send it out as soon as possible. To let them manage the timelines. They are invested in this as we are. But it's going to be sent directly to known vendors and or that is my understanding. Or else, like, where do you find the list of people? List sir. Yeah, yeah. We talked about. I don't know if you were here. We talked about putting it on the uh, state fire list sir. Putting it through DAS, so it goes on that the uh, procurement so. portal, and then post it in um, various, um, you know, IFC things like that throughout the country. That's... I'll second your motion. Okay, most was made and motion's been made and seconded to let the vice chairman and uh, member uh, Mike McCool, will work with it and. Get it ready for prime time. Um, all in favor? Uh, just as long, no. the, the, as long as the final document gets pushed out to all committee members. Well, okay, all right. With, with, the, with the final, with, with, the, with the final pushed out to all members yeah. for final review. We have the current version, we like now. We have the current version, yes, they're right. going to tweak it. Did you want to add something to it? I don't have enough no, I, knowledge I, to, make it, I, to, to make it any better. Really? Or worse. I'm still a bit confused. <laughs> About what? What's are, are we soliciting someone that's going to assist this project to kind of study the Board of Finance thinks, or is this just limited to the heat map of the town? No, no, no. no, no. This, this is, is a full This is that's what I read it. That's how I read it. But I, full month. So then I got yeah. confused when you said we're focusing just on that. But oh uh, no, it was just uh, when when we were talking about it last time. Most of the studies sort of start with a preamble about the history of the town, 
and we didn't think that was like valuable. History, oh, yeah, those, those, the, the, old, the, old, the old yeah. studies and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I but I guess even the new I study. all that discussion. Okay, even the new okay. study kind of gives a lot of I'm demographics good, of the town. But we, we, have, we have a lot to look at in terms right. of. Right. Uh, I don't think we need to so know. Our facilities, about, our equipment, our right. two departments, you know, we, we, we really yeah. need an objective. I think that's what the Board of Finance is. It was, right. it was the tension in the room. That was the tension. They, yeah, they, yeah, they're yeah. looking for us to bring in that outside objective person Correct. to look at this and work with our committee. But really to focus on emergency services, not how the town has grown. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that, might, that might factor into their analysis of where a fire or emergency service has to grow. But I don't think we need to I'm, I'm good. I was lost there for a minute. Right, I no, I'm just glad you asked. That's what we're here to do. Well, that's good. Uh, so... Again, motions on the floor to made and seconded to let the vice chairman and member of McCoo to uh, get the final document, which will then be shared with all members prior to sending. Um, I'm sure they will give us a timeline to respond. Um, any further discussion? Call to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Okay. Cool. Um, Clean out, next uh, item B, clean out of existing foundation drains at station 13. Andy, in the absence of Mike's presence, yes. should we, if we're going to go by the agenda, should we do uh, resident to speak? <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> yes. We should do that. Uh, this is good. This is good. You didn't even tell me to say it. Uh, I was like, no, else's no, birthday. No, absolutely right. Thank so... you. Thank you for keeping me on track. I'm sorry. It's totally skipped. Uh, <laughs> I guess. I'm this. I'm looking at it. No excuse. It's so excited. We have new stuff to talk yes. about. There's no excuse. Anyway, yes, present to speak. Is there anyone here online or in person that would like to speak to the committee? Mitch Sabo. Uh, How do you spell your last name? S A B A. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, just here out of curiosity, or anything else, uh, I'd uh, first of all I'd like to make sure I send out a shout out to all of the emergency services people in town. You guys have saved my life at least three times in the last two years. Don't look at me. No, no, I wasn't looking at you. Well, <laughs> I want to say it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I've always had the utmost respect, but uh, it's it's been uh, I've personally benefited. So, so thank you. Um, I've gone for a few rides. Yes, yes, not fun, but um, but it's it's appreciative how quickly you guys respond to everything. So, uh, so I'm here more out of curiosity. Uh, you know, good. The, yeah, thank you. The taxpayer side of me wants to make sure we get things done right. I know we got the guys who picked me up in the ambulance. I think are the ones living in the mobile home. Uh, mm -hmm down there um so i'm curious one of the questions i had uh, driving here i thought of i know we bought the old saint jude property um and there's a house there is there any reason why we are housing them there temporarily it's rented it is okay yeah. uh, it's not it's not yeah we're looking one looking home so you just want to okay. speak on behalf of willing to know all right it is rented there kind of sir so you just should yeah all right just as I drove past it, I went, no, oh, oh, that, that would be better than each other. <laughs> we did actually use, I think, during COVID. COVID, yep. Yeah, we did. Yeah, there was well, a lot of people during COVID. Yeah, because it wasn't, uh, what do you populate them? Yeah. Or, yeah. It's also a proximity issue yeah. because if Station 13 was usable at this moment and all the rolling stuff was held down there, having the personnel here and the vehicle. Oh, yeah, no, I can't understand the logistics. I didn't. So station 13 is the one down. Okay. Yeah. 30, 30. I just know we have two fire departments that are on station. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I will say that as a taxpayer, and this goes back from, I've been here pretty much my entire life. It'd be nice if we could just have the one fire department kind of come together and merge it. So, yeah. and then the rest is up to you guys. There's a few that think that, and there's a few that. Yeah, of course. I've been, I've been in town long enough to know. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, I've been pulled aside in some of the meetings for saying stuff, but at some of the finance meetings and stuff about the, you know, we're talking about expenses uh, combined. I've been pulled aside and said, well, you know, it's not. So that's fine. I, I, I don't care what the politics are. I'm just your program financial and, and honestly, from a uh, services, assistant services across the community. Uh, that's where I'm thinking from. So, and 
I do know Talon put in a new facility um, where they're housing, you know, has housing and stuff. And I want to say that was a prefab building. So I don't know what you guys would like at. And then I want to show Just throwing that out there as a possible option instead of, you know. Well, I think we were, uh, I think um, Alex was pursuing a, a, a rental building, temporary building, yeah. to, to house the apparatus. But that still doesn't do anything for their staff. But I, I think, know. yeah, I think that I think the Tallinn station, the new one they just built, has staffing and equipment. It's the whole screen one. That's, that's, you kind of Gary Rod? Yeah, really that's, that's right. typically an unstaffed station. Okay. And yeah. it, it's considered a substation kind of. An outlier is someone on the okay. claims road station. But that was a pre federal count. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pre zone structure. Yeah. 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 Just, you do know that, that station 13 on 32 is not usable right now. Are you aware of that? I knew there were issues. I didn't know what it Yeah, it's actually empty and there's nothing in it. Oh, okay. Because uh, the, the uh, mold has uh, infiltrated to a point where it's at very unsafe levels. So, okay. not even equipment, clothing, nothing, nothing. Not in there. Which is part of the reason we're here. Or part. All right. Is there anybody on? Do you have any? No, no, no. Anything else? No, no, no. Feel free to jump in. Uh, we're, we need. We, we like it, but I don't see any hands raised online. Don't see any faces online. Thank you, Brenda, for keeping me on track. Okay, clean out of existing foundation drains at Station Thirteen. They did a little research. Well, Ralph, you you know you're pretty intimate with that. Okay, well, after numerous efforts at exploring what we have there as far as underground plumbing, um, the conclusion is that the foundation drain got plugged by debris landing on the roof. So we don't have a functional drain for pound for downspouts, or do we have a functional drain for the foundation? So uh, we're taking two paths with this. Um, the initial path was to ignore what's in the ground and reconstruct it. That comes with a price tag of about fifteen to sixteen thousand. The alternate approach, which I think is more realistic at this point, is to excavate and expose the foundation drains at two corners of the building and try and rotor rotor. So strange to see if we can get them to flow free. Um, is that possible? Aren't they like four inch plastic PVC pipe? Yeah, I mean, you still run that. Well, I just tear them all up. The, the wrinkles, yes. up. we've had Roman Ruger and other pe people in there in the past. If you're trying to uh, clean them out without excavating, there's two 90 degree elbows to go around the footing. It takes right. 90, then it takes another 90 to join the lateral. They can't get past those two magnets. We're going to expose them. So, if you dig them up, you have a better chance at it. That's exactly what we're looking at doing: is exposing two diagonally opposed corners. So we have a straight shot in two directions from the elbow. Now, the bigger problem is combining the roof runoff with the footing drain. And in essence, it takes all the water that's coming down right. the gutters and dumping it into a perforated pipe around the building. And then runs out right there. But it, um, the problem is, it doesn't really run out very well. Well, it doesn't run out much at all. Yeah. But just the design of having a single perforated pipe for all the roof water to go through defeats the purpose of trying to get the water away from the building. It's simply saturating right. the perimeter of the building with everything that's coming off the roof. To use the solid forage. So, the last diagram I saw yeah. which made a lot of sense to me is uh, you dig a trench, put down fabric gravel, perforated pipe, and then um, you can cover that back up if you want, and then a separate solid but non-perforated pipe to handle the roof water. Mm -hmm. They both dump into the same place, but there's no point in taking those hundreds of thousands of gallons of water and dumping it into your perforated pipe. Because the water pressure being what it is, it's just going to go out the holes and not to the end of the pipe just being dumped. Um, Okay, well, the other thing that in, in concert with trying to rotor root it, um, one of the suggestions from Troy is to simply put some surface drainage, connect it down spouts, get, get a couple of rolls of the corrugated solid wall pipe, 
run it out to the low spot on the north end and connect the downspouts to that. Sure. That makes sense. And in the meantime, also get into the underground on two corners and see if we can. Okay. So right out the pipes. That we think is going to be a tad less costly uh, than uh, trying to install new piping. Which can still, still only be a temporary piping. Correct. It's so going to be temporary. All of these are just temporary. So it's. Why? I mean, if the foundation drains that were put in were cleaned out and worked, and then you just made, and then you put in the, corrugated downspouts, why is it, why is that any. On, why is that on temporary? Why I'm is not that, arguing. I'm just no, why is it temporary? Because we don't know what we're going to do with the building yet. Right. Oh, we're going to do any sense. foundation work, foundation structural repair work, or I see. excavation for any sort of addition. You're going to have to put it all new. And the plumbing gotcha. is old, perforated, et cetera. You want to replace that to right. separate the systems at that some point, sense. permanently, anyway. I mean, I, I think the, the roto rooter root and put the, some surface drainage for the downspouts in is, is probably the, the most sensible thing to do at this point at the, at the least cost. And, and quite honestly, and I'm going to get in trouble for this statement, but I think that that's the responsibility of the fire department to take care of that. It's their obligation to do proper maintenance on the building. And it was lack of maintenance that causes problems. That was what kind of maintenance is that was that clean, clean the gutters. The gutters were clean. It's the shit that went down, down the, in the pipe. Yeah, the perforated ground. Where the perforated pipe with nothing covering the holes. Yeah, I mean, what's that? Yeah, perforated pipe with nothing covering the holes underground. That's not it, the issue. The issue is the stuff that got washed in from the roof. The debris. The debris that falls on the roof. It's pine needles and leaves that plugged up those pipes. I mean, it's the same money anyway. All town. So it challenged it every no. other town building to document one where their gutters and curtain well, drains clean. I still think it's a maintenance issue. This was a high level of frustration issue, as Andy knows, at the Board of Planning meeting. Board yeah, of we we Board did have for maintenance for that building of about $6,000. That's, That's the limit of our money. What they reminded us of. They allocate these funds every year for maintenance and it appears, as Ralph says, that was not being done. In fact, I personally and that hurts our credibility. Many times cleaning them out, but you're talking about trying to fix it now. And I stopped with Troy today, and he's estimating twenty to thirty thousand bucks, depending on the scope of things, yeah. just to get the right. Well, I got I got numbers from Troy. So I mean, and uh, you know, is that the fix for it? I mean, that's not is that a permanent fix for it? No. It, None of these are permanent. And things. considering we have six thousand bucks to spend on the entire building for the year, where's the money coming from? Well, we talked about that. The board of finance meeting been in the budget. There is thirty-three thousand dollars to pay the parking lot that doesn't need to be paid because it might well be torn up, depending on what this committee decides. So that's one opportunity um, to help this situation and use. Now that's in CIP, voted on by the town, so we have to get moved, Andy. Um, and we, talk, we talked about that at the Board of Finance meeting. But a good starting point. You know, there are funds earmarked for the fire department for other purposes. Well, this purpose, well, the only purpose I can think of right now, is we need a garage for the winter to house our fire trucks in. So why not start there, move those funds to where they can be put to better use? The issue of why for the last umpteen decades, we haven't been using the $5,000 a year to maintain our gutters, the topic for another day. We need to, we need to resolve the issue now. Yes. And I would say that's a good starting point, but as someone just said, there's a timeline of all these things. We just can't take it. It has to be, right. it has to be acted on by the Board of Finance. Um, well, first of all, it's like the Board of Finance and, and then probably town meeting. Well, I have a question. Is that so? The drains is a cause for the mold. Is that? I, I think that the drains is a cause of the water intrusion into the building. Where is the water intrusion? Was have it, you have you discovered been, where the water is coming in? It was coming up between the. From what I can tell, it was coming up from between the wall and the edge of the slab. Like the foundation wall on the floor slab. Same. 
And it said, you got water, and that's how the mold ran up the up Well, the you have damp conditions. It's, it's sealed on the inside because of drywall, and the water's... Well, I, I yeah, space. looking at how it was constructed, and the way the, and the building's use, I see mold growing on the outside of the insulation, correct? That's on the plastic on the outside of the insulation. Between the sheetrock, which was studded, and I just think it's poorly constructed that how that was. And bringing all that apparatus in there, if that building isn't dry enough, condensation comes on the walls, runs down between there. So you could add just condensation running down the insulation into there. That because I don't disagree well, with you, Dave. I don't disagree with you that that from, from a building envelope perspective, yes, it was it was poorly constructed. Yeah, I mean, just and, because, and you know, they put the petitions up and how it's, you know, there. That was, uh, that's a great place between the sheetrock and that insulation for mold to grow. I mean, great ideal, unless you could get enough ventilation in there and heat and air to dry it out. And that's not possible that way. Well, it's open now. It will open. <laughs> well, we can well water. again, well, that's what I'm saying. It just poured now the other day. We had two and a half inches of rain here. How much water has filtrated into the building? I wish Alex was here. There you go. Uh, Stu, do you have any idea if it's the wet in there now? It's, well, it's, I was, I know it's, it's leaking in the front of the building because of the, uh, partially because of the unevenness of the pavement out front. It's kind of settled where the tires have driven. And that's why we had the $30,000 in the last fiscal year to replace those aprons that had been there before too high and we took them out. Now they've been settled. So there's gaps like this under the front door, and there's a big crack in the foundation and in the front. In the back side, you know, I'm not sure how you can get that insulation dried out because it's all covered in plastic. Um, you, you know, there's, there's, there's plastic and there's some fiberglass insulation, yeah, but that's up against the metal on the outside. So on the back wall, then they take all that insulation out? On uh, the back? Well, on the back wall, yes. Yeah. Um, no, you still have the signs, but there's been you know signs of water almost everywhere in there in the kitchen, the left hand window is leaking, uh, the back window area is leaking kind of like behind where we had the stove. Um, this is not so going well. No, no, it, it, in the, like water's in, going in the lock, locker room, I was in there with one rainstorm, then he dripped on my head, was hitting at one of the cross beams, so I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from. Then in their day room was by the window, mostly traversing over to the boiler room. Um, so are we now all of a sudden, instead of a bad foundation, we've got a bad roof, bad windows, all sorts of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's getting deeper and deeper. Yeah, right. All of a sudden, that, this is news to me. Well, well the roof's been replaced. Place. It looks like there's a leak or two up top, but nothing... I would say it's the it's news of everybody. Nobody's heard about yeah, that. No one's heard it really about this. We knew about new. the front, and then we knew about the, the front and the aprons and water right. front. And that's and then like also the foundation. Which is on the back. Right. Which is the areas that I mentioned. But nothing about the window. windows. 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 Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's a 44. Right, right, right. 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 But day. those aren't the like the window and like maybe this roof like aren't like the major areas of water intrusion anyway. It's so the, the still first, seems like the front of the building they can attest to this one is blocked largely because the front of the building rotted off. Right. The sea channels at the bottom that hold the walls rotted out. Yeah, and this is a salt and all the right the and moisture right. running down right. and stuff like that. Tore the front off. Yeah, and we tore the front off. The south side of the building, which over time the water coming down from the upper hill. Um, the bolts have pulled through the tin at the bottom. The, if you open and close the side door, we mainly go in. It swings in the breeze the door because, jam. because that door jam is not connected to the foundation anymore. The yeah. back of the building is somewhat the same, and even the north side, which has actually some clearance above the dirt, you look at the bottom line. The bolts have pulled through all the panels. And these aren't easy maintenance items, and that's why you know over the over the years we. Uh, how long have I been out? Six, five, six years. I mean, we we've been talking about this in CIP. We're talking about replacing that firehouse and making modifications to it because all these things, but they're not they're not easy small ticket well, items, and and you know, and I don't mean to 
I guess it'd be with you, but you know, we want to do maintenance. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do? Some jack up a building and put a new no. steel beam underneath that's it? That's not what maintenance. Kind of, that's not maintenance. The building is 44 years well, old. Understood. I mean, well, I, 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 so we, the point is that we're, we, if you go back and look, the fire department administration has been on record of coming and saying, listen, we got a problem down there. But this starts all the way back to you know, prior to even Christina being on the board of selectmen. Okay. Well, you, know, you know, so it's not, it's not like, I don't want to leave the impression where some, let's watch a building fall down because it's fun. It's, it's not the case. It's, it's the, you know, it's a, it's a bigger problem. We, we've been telling you it's a bigger problem, but no one wants to spend the money. So, Yes, that's the problem. Typical Wellington, it's a yeah. fight for the money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, there isn't much of it. Yeah. and a board of finance that wants to be very frugal. And a population that wants to be very frugal. So sometimes these things end up rearing their head. Yeah, it's just, you know. <clears throat> anyway, so, I mean, the bottom line is we got to have shelter for the uprise somehow. And I think we're trying to focus on the main cause of the water intrusion. And I, there's right. no doubt that is the drainage issue. And well, well, no, I, I, I disagree. I, you're saying well, there's no tangent, doubt that well, the drains now. You're no, saying no doubt this around. is why. I, I, I see there's a lot of other issues that this is just why. It's a and I just heard it now that this is why. Mm -hmm. but, and but I, we I, have a fire department right now that is condemned because of mold. The water filtration's in. They came in and abated it. Partially. Partially abated it. And now we got mold growing again. That's because the water has to stop. Now, it's coming from the ground, it just asked the question, where else? I saw how some of the construction is. That was, you know, sandwiched between protests. That's not, that's mold area to grow. Okay, so that was just, after a certain amount of time, that's going to happen. So now... Where are we at? We are we, just because we dig up the ground out there, we're we gonna be able to move any apparatus into this building? Doesn't look that way to me. You're still gonna have the bowl problem. It's not you're not ending it. Just by digging up and fixing mm -hmm. some pipes, we're not ending it. You don't know that. Okay. I know. It's it's reasonable to assume, as we have been as a committee, that if we can address the water issue, resolve the drainage coming off the roofs. Steer the water out of the building, as Ralph's describing. We have a reasonable <laughs> opportunity to arrest the mold and use this as a functional garage. We understand you want a new building. We understand that. Don't worry, but, but the tell us is every single problem under the sun and that we can't proceed is counterproductive. No, I want us to proceed, but I don't want to just do the drainage and then I don't want to just fix the roof and then I don't want to fix the the windows. I want it done today. To me, I have it done already. You know, I do it. Take some money, fix it. And you make not just the drainage. Every other issue that water comes in that building, dry it out, put the apparatus back in it. And it could happen, but it takes a little money. He, he's not know? saying he's opposed to opposed. the drainage. Nope. But he's saying right. he wants to see. I want to see you just well, because just because you fix the drainage doesn't mean you're going to move any apparatus. Well, with all due respect, this is the first we're hearing about windows. Yeah. And and, 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 I, and I attend. I am a a official attender of every board of finance budget <laughs> meeting there is for the last three decades. I have never ever heard this. Never. Can we have someone else from not that just maybe like a different perspective, a good an additional perspective or more information? Where's Alex? Uh, or you that's like at that building more like well, that it, talk about a, the water it's issue. The bottom line is, it's, and, and I think Stuart was just demonstrating that there's always problems with building that. It's a like, building. No is one's water pouring. Is water pouring in the building? No. Like, if there's a window, at the, there's a seal break in a back of a window and water comes in when it rains heavy. Possibly. Like a slightly it's damp like, window is yeah, not talking yeah, about all not, of those issues. Right. That are going to keep perpetuating the mold. That's I'm different done. than like, oh, it's dripping on my forehead. what you're saying, but it's just, there's not like, you know, water pouring into the place. No, yeah. There's always leaks in that roof. It's a colossal roof that has a bunch of um, openings cut into it. Caulking's going to fail. It's going to dry out. There's, there's, there's a leak. You can get it fixed. And it happens. All right. Well, if you remember in one of the early walkthroughs, we went there and they said, Alex said, this water is coming up through the floor, right. which is where we started with the drainage issue. He was pointing to those areas saying this floor was dry. 
we were light engineers, and it came up through the floor. So that implies that the ground under the beneath the concrete, which is concrete's porous, is saturated to the level that there's this water pressure pushing it up. So the only thing you can do in this situation is identify, and I, and I yield to engineers. And we can have conjecture, we can have their opinions, and you know. But you have to deal with people that do this professionally for a living. If Ralph and and Carl has one say, listen, this is the first step you should try, then you do that. Yeah. And do it, do it in a cost-effective manner as you possibly can. Exactly. So go through the exercise and get it done. At the end of the day, Dave, to your point, um, nobody's going back in there. Whether you do drainage, or brand new drainage, old drainage, it doesn't matter until that until air tests until safe inside that building. Okay, yeah. Until we get to that point, nothing's going in there. So one step at a time. When we kind of but we kind of jerk drain is a step. Drain, drain, that's drain. all it is. It's a step, and that should stop the water from coming yeah, up. Number one, the top. do something. Right. right to do it to the best of our ability. Do it in a financially responsible right. manner. Let it sit. Let it dry out. Test mm -hmm. what that time frame is. I yield to the engineers. I yield to a mold specialist who's right. trained in this. The same yeah, one. Yeah. It's two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. We're going to test. That's the industry standard. Right. It's just like outside air versus inside air. The EPA says that that's the standard you use. That's the standard you use. I don't know any different. Right. Um, so just one step at a time. Mm -hmm. We're getting, we're going, going a little bit farther ahead than we need to. There's a couple of things that I think are in our favor that for one thing, it's getting cooler unless you know, the weather is changing. So if, the, I know. It's not, I know, I know. But, if, but if we haven't started anything yet either. Yeah. So I'm sorry. If the curtain drains are done and that draws the water away from the ground, lowers the water table, so there's no longer any hydraulic pressure pushing water up through the concrete, that's a positive. And if and, it's still wet, now we have right. to chase now, the thing Dave started. Well, that's right. But then, so we move forward, and now the floor is not is no longer, the water is not percolating up through the floor. That's good. Now you get the mold out, so now the walls are clean, and it's tested positive for air quality. Throw some heat in there. Mm. Now you could fix some leaks. Uh, now you could caulk some windows. Now you could you could pop rivet sheet metal and and tap kind it to the floor if you yeah, want to do there that. There you go. That's fairly inexpensive, and it does keep the sheet rock from banging around. I mean the sheet metal from banging around. Those are things well within a maintenance budget. So I think that that that's fine. Story that's good information. Thank you. It's helpful. I didn't. I got anyone just surprised that we hadn't heard. You made it sound like water's pouring in from all sides. It was a little no. startling because it's the first time we've heard of it. We've been marching forward, you know, feeling all happy about you know the uh, curtain rings. Yes, Mr. Savia. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, so if this was your house, and you mold, had mold, had an issue with mold like this, your homeowners insurance would kind of kick in and. Help you abate some of the costs of that. Does the town carry insurance on the buildings like that? The fire department carries its own policies by by our contract with the town. Okay, um, so I'm just wondering if that helps is helping to defray the cost. Right. Well, I think that no. your homeowner's insurance would it well. Well, I'm not sure Maybe. which policy you have, but from personal experience, so I had water in my basement when I purchased my home. I had a very wet basement. Um, and any damage caused by that, homeowner's insurance wouldn't cover it right. if I had flood and specific mold insurance because right. it's not, it was like a, it was a just issue kind of like structurally to the house. It and wasn't, it, it wasn't it because... Right, it wasn't because right. the pipe burst, or it wasn't because the tree fell on it, and then God. rain got in there. It wasn't like the weather act of God. It was because of the right. building itself, which yeah. is the same issue here. Like, a truck didn't hit it, and then it got wet inside. Yeah. You know, I so, think we did go that route. Yeah. 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 Okay. I grilled okay. Alex on that at the beginning. To me, the, 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 the curtain drain being clogged sounds like a broken pipe in the house. You know, um, yeah, it's I know the stretch, but usually it's sudden and accidental is the way the word right. the policy. So right. Like like right. Brendan was saying, you know, I'm just curious. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point. But the the reality with homeowners or similar insurance is it's a casualty policy. Yes. It is not a warranty on no no no, I know that. But I was saying like if you had a pipe burst in your house when you were on vacation, we did. your insurance would cover that. But if you had a leaky pipe behind your wall that just like dripped drip, dripped over the last 20 years and then behind the wall was leaky, like I don't think they're gonna fix that for right, you. Right, right. And then um another question I had, and this is not just for the situation, but to, is there like a maintenance system, like a ticketing system we keep in town? So like a leaky window can just be long, so at least the town knows what's going on. So the, the fire department's um, 
the, the buildings and the land that the fire department sit on are owned by the independent corporations. The, the, the town of Wilmington contracts with each department for service. Right. So liability insurance, um, you know, things like that, and the, um, anything to do with the buildings and the grounds are ultimately the responsibility of the fire department to take care of okay. utilizing taxpayer funds, but it's the responsibility of the department. Hence the board of finance say about six thousand. Okay. Yeah. I'll just be thank you. Yeah. Right. And so anyway. So we're gonna move forward with uh is that is that right now? I mean you I haven't talked to Troy or the board of selectmen about it, but um it looks like okay. excavation and cleaning and rotor rotoring is a vital option and within I'm resolving it, Alex would or someone would know where they're at because right. I thought Alex was pursuing. I talked to Troy today. Yeah, as did I. He said there's a cost of some machine that they have to rent. Right. Um which is rather significant. Forty five hundred. And he's waiting for the price of the pipes which is he's got that. Okay, he told me he's waiting tomorrow for the cost of the pipes to go to Okay. I got a text today from him. Uh forty five hundred for a rental of the machine because his little excavator won't be deep enough. And it's not going to handle the precast elements for the manhole of the cut space. Um, so you get about three grand in, in precast components and about eight grand in piping. And yep. that's for the new option. That, that's for the new option. Oh. Yes. That's yeah. the major option. Go rip everything up, but all the clean out is different. Essentially, yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So when Carl was out there, and the conversations I've had with Carl Asimovic is let's do some surface stuff. Get some coils of corrugated solid wall piping, hook it up to the downspouse, run it out to a low spot away from the building. For now, until we can get the rotor root in. Where would you run it to? Uh, I think on the north side, there's a low spot. There's a low spot just north of the building. In between the two properties? Yeah, I think it's right on the property line. That's a big roof. But there was, that's, that's where the swale was draining to anyway. Uh, in yeah, the original there's, there's design. Swale. Yeah, I just don't, I don't want to make sure that we, we're not impeding on. And you said that's like and the other side too, like one on each side. The other side, we're going to go over there. The south side? Yeah, where it comes over into the. We're well, over here. Here. property. That's all. So I'm sure I'm going to all. No, I understand, but we can't cross fast roads if we do this on the surface either. So. You can't what? We can't run it across fast road to get it to no, drain no. into the gully. Yeah. If you get to the parking lot, it could sheet blow across Trask Road, I guess. I'm sorry, except for the winter. Yeah, right. <laughs> nice. yeah. 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 Well, I mean, everybody does it. Go down to 74 and tall. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy wrote over the birdie. Well, if you get the prices, I will present those to the Board of Finance and see what they have to say. They seem to agreeable to working with. So, that was the worst case scenario numbers you just gave? To, to put in a new subsurface drainage system as well as connect the downspouts to separate plumbing. Surface plumbing, rather. No, no, no. This, the, the, right. the 15 grand total, 16 grand total was, was all new. Option. It is, it is the new into the underground. Okay. Underground. Into the, what, I, what I had right. designed with Carl. Right. That building. Into yeah. the 24 inch pipe that goes Correct. under the stream. So that, that's the best case. But even before that, you're saying we could do surface re this water that would start the dry out process now. Hopefully, yes. Well, at least take rainwater away from when the rain from the four right. downspouts. Coupled yeah. with the, the road rotor. Rotor. Yes. How quickly could we get that work going realistically? With Give me a credit card, I'll go to Home Depot tomorrow and get the coils. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to buy so much. So it's not specialty equipment. <laughs> I mean, like they have to, the town would still have to excavate to reach the 90s of the two locations. Right. We have a hole started in the left rear like corner. We need to we need to dig another one at the right front corner. I mean, if it if it if it works and there's a it proves our theory in the end, then you can go finish it. Yeah, right, that's right. Hey. There's still moisture intrusion into that building just simply because of the type of building it is. No. Yeah. Yeah. It is a metal sided building. If you have levels of humidity inside of that building higher than outside and the temperature is cold outside, it's mm -hmm. going to condense on that yeah, side. That's it. There you go. Like mm -hmm. you were talking. There you go. And that was my suspicion when I first looked at the water issue. As I walked around inside there with Alex. I still so. think that's part of it. Throw the heat out in there, dry that building out. Yeah. 
But I mean, I don't know mold very well, but what I saw, that doesn't look like 45 years of mold. Yeah, so well, it seems to me that the first 25 years were probably okay. Maybe. So that may, leads me to believe that it clogged, that the, the, that the clogged foundation drains certainly didn't, certainly didn't help. Oh, no. If those I had agree. been, I agree. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not yeah. casting blame about why that happened. They all clog up. That's why you're no longer allowed to put your roof drains right. into the foundation drains anymore because it doesn't work. It fails right. eventually. So the fact that it lasted 30 or 35 years, arguably, without significant mold, then leaves me that that gives me confidence that if the foundation drainage can be corrected, it'll probably go a long way. It will stop the water infiltration. When you were in the you were in there, you walked through, you saw the channels on top of the foundation wall that the siding is connected yeah. to. That's an upside down channel. Yeah. It's a trough. Yep. It's a rusty, it's full of water. It's a rusty trough. Very rusty trough. That a lot of that water is most likely from condensation, not com not coming up. Or leaking, the building leaking, the siding leaking it gets in that trough. Yeah, if, either way. If you got passengers that are rusting through and you well, put holes in the just side. the nature of the fire department bringing trucks in and out that yeah. are soaking wet, right? And you bring them in, there's condensation. And Putting the heat on, like I said, I don't know what they run the heat in there. But to me, it seems to me that your grown mold is because it's damp in there and the humidity is too hot. And what every mold guy tells you, you want to get rid of mold, you got to dry the building off, stop the leaks, and dry it out. Yep. And it's got to be you know, warm enough in there to dry it out. Yeah. That sounds good. When Mansfield did to one of their stations, actually maybe two, they put an air to air heat exchanger in there in an effort to. Move some air out to capture at least some of the heat before it goes outside. Mm -hmm. uh, they did that to two of their stations. Yeah, and, been, and it's been noticed in one of the studies, I think it was the Castle Abuse one, there's no makeup air in that entire building. Um, there's no what? No, what they call makeup air, except for the vents. So oh, there's no oil air, no fresh air. There's, there's, no, there's no air exchange. Okay. Uh, well, there's, what, other than what leaks. And there's also like a, sometimes a ton of air exchange when you open the doors. Which is like a whole other kind of like unique to a firehouse exactly. problem. Mm -hmm. It's like if it's you humid and damp outside, you nice and dry and cool inside or whatever, you open the door and then right. you get an air too much air exchange. Yeah, with zero. But clearly that's not like you need to just <laughs> this building, so well then I think that's better. There's <laughs> less moisture in the air. I think it's important to remember that we do just want it as a garage. We don't expect Excellent. Excellent. With, with a bare, with basically bare steel walls, right? Cleaned, bleached, whatever. However, you get rid of mold. Yeah, but again, but uh, still, you get you know, you say just bare metal walls. You still got to throw heat in that building. Yes, you still got to heat that building. We understand it because of the water. That it does so it does. Heat. To me, I look at it and said, well, you should put some insulation back on the walls yeah. instead of just trying to heat a metal building. And then it should be spray yeah. insulation because well, then you yeah, then you come to the best insulation that you can put on a wall water that's not going to absorb water. Yeah, it's spray foam. Well, it's another. Yeah. They don't want to go there. It's yeah. expensive. Well, uh, but if we can dry it out without doing that, it's great. Right. So it would be a uh, heat right. right. in the winter and a dehumidifier in the summer it would probably be in order. You know, but you should you know put some kind of insulation back on the walls so you're not you know, or you just run the heat forever. You know, temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing we should be doing is lowering the ground around the building. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well that siding should be at least six inches to a foot above the ground. Right. Is that our fault too? Yeah, yes. Is it? Making sure. Well, no, yeah, you know, well, you know, you know, the house gate when the building was, 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 was built, all the time. In continental buildings, we put masonry four feet around the around the building, and then metal comes to there. Masonry is on on from the foundation, so you're away from that situation. Many buildings we put up that way. Many, and this one is to the ground, and and there's no foundation sticking out. Okay, so that. That's just, you know, doesn't help much. No, no, no. That's, but that's the 40 years ago. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't, I don't remember what it looked like when it was brand new. So, you're old enough to know. 1980? You're old enough. Yeah, I was 30, but I wasn't in town. I wasn't, I wasn't in town then. I was in town then. I was. How old? Oh, those are those years. You'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> 
meetings were a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're I think we're done with item B. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what did we on. conclude? Uh, yeah, so we're gonna you you're gonna try to roll to root it. Oh, I think that's so we have a consensus with that. Yeah. Yeah. Put the service strategy in for the down spouse and see if we can clean out the foundation right What do you Mike was here, he would say we need like some sort of motion. What do you do for the front? Oh down the down spouse. Well what we first have to do is get from the Hang on, I'm sorry. That the two huge downspouts coming down the front of the building. It's, it's, it's six inch flexible. One. But do they run in front of the main doors? That's the problem. That's what I'm asking. Are you going to put a truck in now? No, I, but. <laughs> no, but this needs to be like temporary. Yeah, yeah, long as long as we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah right. you, can run, you can run 10 feet of leaders out there, that's fine. But if it comes back where it's, hey, the mold's going down, it's, if the air comes back safe, you can't have. Right, yeah, hundreds of like, gallons of water emptying the drive. Exactly. That we could get into a more permanent solution. Yeah, well, you're going to have to. I mean, you can't. At least the water is getting away from the building. You have a skating rink out there. Yes, I right. think that was your intent, right, Ralph? Just start redirecting the water now. Yes. Yeah. You, were, you weren't suggesting we were going to block their trucks when they return. No, 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 no. No one said that. What I just said was you have to deal with the two downspouts, the big ones, in front where all the, where the bays are. If you're going to do that and just put you know, that was what's out into the, into the open parking lot in the winter time. That's a problem. That's all I said. Unless where are they going? Blocking on? fire trucks. Where are they going now? But they're, they're going, going down. They're going down. They're they're going down. The front ones are going. Yeah. yeah they're they're going going that's why I asked the question. No, yeah. no, that's but, but Ralph, you've been saying this is a very short term yes. exercise. We're we're not looking to have this there. The this first. would not be the permanent solution. The permanent solution is this for fifty to twenty thousand dollars. Yes, it would be really inexpensive. We, we want to prove that this this can help exactly you know short term small price yeah. exercise yeah, yeah. And, and do we need a motion to set this into motion probably right. do okay ralph do you want to craft a motion yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, that? what's that going to consist of well we're going to make a motion let's just talk it out we're going to make a motion to clean out the existing Foundation, foundation drains. drains using third party um, drain cleaner. Um, install uh, solid corrugated uh, flexible, drain, flexible drain pipe on all four. So we're back all four down down spouts. All four so, downspouts. So we need to dig up both ends to do that drainage ordering. Two die one. We have one hole and well, already we'll started. In concert with Public Works. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. In concert with Public Works. In concert with Public holes. Works. Uh, to expose uh, foundation drains, clean out with a third party drain cleaning operation, um, install four flexible solid corrugated or corrugated solid, solid wall. wall drain pipes to move um, water away from the building and monitor results. So moved. <laughs> and one second. Then. <laughs> Do we Is that good enough? We have a copy of it so we can. Well, that, I suppose we got it right, right now. Down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, give the instructions to somebody, right? Uh, I think we had a recording. Actually, Troy. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it says end. Okay. What says it? Who's paying the call? I need to resolve that. Let's refresh it. Let's start all of <laughs> So the motions, I'm just writing it down. Oops. In concert, I'm going to start off with in concert with Wellington PW, PW Wellington Public Works. Expose, expose existing foundation drains. That does not control the second column. Foundation drains. Use a third party. Drain, what do you call it? I don't want to say rotor rotor, that's a cleaner. Clean out service. Drain clean out service. So, um, to clean out, remove, remove the drain existing. I did install solid walls. I corrugated. Corrugated. 
training by on all four, right? Four down spots. What do you call it? Down spots. Down spots is good enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I make a motion that in concert with the Willington Public Works, expose existing foundation drains, use a third party drain cleanup service to clean out said drains and install solid wall corrugated drain pipe on all four downspouts at station 13. Flexible, solid wall. I almost thought that was over in that. Do you have any estimate on the cost of the rotor router? Is there Detroit. any? No, I thought Alex was chasing that. Okay. I was curious what that would be. Yeah. No, I'm going to do Troy didn't have any estimation or? Okay. I'll say it again. Motion in concert with Wellington Public Works expose existing foundation drains, use a third party drain cleanout service to clean out said drains, install flexible solid wall, corrugated drain pipe on all four downspouts at station 13. Above ground. Temporary above ground. Pipe piping from all four. Corrugated. You just want to make it clear that we're, this is. We're not digging to put this stuff in. That's good. Okay, try it again. In concert with Wellington Public Works, expose existing foundation drains, use a third party drain cleanup service to clean out said drains, install flexible solid wall, cor corrugated temporary above ground piping on all four downspouts at station 13. So you can value water away from the building. I'm not going to read it again. You can oh. read it. I'll keep that. Well, how, that far, how far away from the building do we need to go? Far enough. Far away. Works. Works. That's a technical term. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't come back at the building. Right. Wherever that magic point is. <laughs> Wherever it keeps going. <laughs> or soaks into there. It's almost dead flat around there, right? There's no, no drop. No Actually, no, it's no, not. No. Yeah. It does slope away? Yeah, or does it does slope? Yeah. yeah. It's quite a depression on the north side. Yeah. Okay. So on the north side, if you run the... Well, we got to be careful with the neighbors. Yeah. yeah, she goes into the neighbor's yard. There's a there's a buffer there of not swampy, but there's a there's a buffer there. But I yeah, just want to make sure he's mowed most of it back for grass now. That holds that section that was between us. Yeah. So oh. there's so it's like four feet, four six feet of bushes. Okay. Who's got something to keep an eye on? That's all. Um. If anything, we'll go to trench across grass, kind of. Or put it in the bike. Put it into the 24 inch pipe. Yeah. Dig a hole, put it in the pipe. Dig a drive. Right. Dig a console. Can you go to the storm drain in 32? It's right in front of the pipe. Oh, it's going to drop. It does, but that's like oh. once you get there. Yeah. We'll leave that up to the engineers. Yep. Yeah, we'll have to refine the length of pipe. I don't think we're going to have to buy any fittings. I think you can bend that flexible stuff. Yeah. Put it around down, down spot, down pretty big. Right? Six yeah, but if you get six inch corrugated, I, th I think you can squeeze the walls to get it up and over to us. Yeah. Or get a fitting. Or get a fitting. I don't want to or cut them if we don't have to, though. Yeah, no, right. Pop it at a mount, so they stay or screw them on. Yeah, put a couple of screws in. Metal screws. Zip ties and duct tape. That works too. Yeah. Real estate yeah. is great. Absolutely. If you've ever used it, I do. <laughs> Flex seal. <laughs> flex seal. <laughs> hey, you make a bolt with it. Yeah. <laughs> and we all want it. Well, doesn't does flex seal now have it so you can spray it under your house? Yeah. So when, uh, when you have the flood, you know, you can do that to the firehouse, right? Yeah, so sure. it's spray it out around right. four flex feet. Flex seal. Yeah. Flex seal. Yeah. They, yeah. they advertise it so if there's a rain flood Perfect. coming in, they will keep the water coming flex in your house. Flex seal, we can fix that. Spray. We have a paint sprayer. We're we will do it ourselves. Okay, I'll load it if you guys want it. <laughs> Let's get through this motion. Okay. Right. <laughs> Somebody brought up flex seal. Okay. In order to convey water away from the building, in concert with Willington Public Works, expose existing foundation drains, use a third party drain cleanup service to clean up said drains, install flexible solid wall corrugated. Temporary above ground piping on all four downspouts at station 13. There's a second. Second. Motion has been made a second. Any discussion? Yes. If there are any concerns regarding the financing of this project, um, 
there's, I think it was previously mentioned, there's $30,000 in CIP now for the, for the replacement of that, that driveway. That was from last fiscal year correct. for the evenings. Yep, correct. There's been some discussion between CIP and Board of Finance that the 200000 that's now in the planning budget for the buildings came from the 110000 that Lincoln Hill never got authorized, the 80000 that we didn't spend completely on the architect for our plans, and the 30000 for the aprons. Well, maybe we can ask for the 30000 to fund this project. Yeah. Right. So it's, 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 it's been the reserve city city. talk to says if that's where the source of that $200,000 came from. Good point. Well, it begs the philosophical question of if, if the if projects and money are in a plan, they're approved by the Board of Finance, approved by the Board of Finance, approved by the town body, it's in the budget, and the Board of Finance automatically not give it to you, and- Yes, and yes that's, that's what they really really willing to help. Uh, that's what they did with us for our plans. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They, 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 we we had a budget to get our plans, and they're like, yeah, just because it's earmarked doesn't mean you get it. We're like, right. that's very true. Okay. Um, anyway, if they would like to utilize that, that money, they're more than, uh, more than they're well, uh, that, that takes a process. And yeah, there, there's something more expedient. And what I'm thinking of is uh, the five thousand maintenance. Can we can we tap into that? Yeah, I mean this. I mean all of this could be considered that. That's in my out of what the operating budget. Yes. Yeah, sure. We're just go back in here and ask for more money. So go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I, I think just thinking that would be expedient uh, because this, this is just a corrugated pipe and. Yeah, yeah, we got to get a but we got to get a number. I don't think we the have, corrugated yeah. pipe is the expensive part here. I think it's going to be the drain cleaning service. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. That's, that's, that's why I asked. It's not the corrugated pipe. We've got another roll that can give you. Like, it's not going to be that. Right. It's, it's going to be the drain cleaning service. Yeah, that's like a flutter. So, if you utilize $5,000 of the maintenance budget on Station 13, what are you going to maintain this year? That's a fire hose. That's a fair point. What are you going to do? If the he fails, which it has yep. a couple times. Where's that going? Water pump? No. Yep. Okay. But we got, I'm sure we can afford the corrugated pipe and the fitness yeah. to uh, get that part of the job. Well, I, I have been told multiple times that if, if an item is under $20,000, the Board of Finance can authorize that without going to a town meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. We can just straight up vote on it. Yes, right, right. It's a vote that is done within that body, so that that would save time. And I don't think lower rooting and and corrugated flexible Ralph Tulis piping is going to be separated into two twenty thousand dollars. So it's let's I mean, again, let's let's find okay, out what it costs. You said Alex is probably working. You said he might be. I called. thought it was good. Okay, Jason, fine. I'm sure he is. I will find out. He no. did upstate New York replace with no cell service now. Sorry? He's on vacation? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm at ADR because there's no cell service. Yeah, that's fine. But I mean, he's diligent about what he says he's going to do. He follows through. So uh, we'll just tread water and let him do when he's going to be back. Let him do his thing. Sunday, I think. Yeah, he'll be back. That's fine. We can. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. set up. Tom's, Tom's closed tomorrow anyway, so nothing's going to happen this weekend. That's good. Okay. Um, no, Fridays yeah, are closed now. They're only four days a week. Mm. So did we we didn't call this to a vote yet. So, for that motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. All right. This is uh this is on the agenda. It says public hearing in a town meeting for the current state for here. One of the things that I this is just a personal thing that I've been putting on here or that I put on here. Um throughout my tenure with uh, planning and zoning, and particularly when we have public hearings about, like, for instance, the warehouse. And lately, now that I've been on the Board of Selectmen, I hear a lot that people don't know what's going on. Um, people aren't informed. <laughs> I'm wondering how this committee would feel about uh, me asking to get in front of a, at a town meeting to have public hearings about this subject to talk about what's going on with the current buildings. Um, the, one of the things that I uh, mentioned um, and sort of uh, tried to get people to tune into that we've had three prior studies done. The last one was 99. And in 1999, all three buildings were said, they said, if you do these things to the three fire buildings, firehouses, you'll get 25 years out of them. We're at that 25 year mark. 
all three buildings, we all admit they are aging. They're at they're, they're one could argue they're at the end of their useful life. They weren't really ever meant to last as long as they have. So you could keep maintaining. So, uh, so I'll go kudos to the fire departments for maintaining exactly them right. as well kudos, as they have. Kudos to the fire departments for keeping them as well as they have. Yeah. So we do the to keep them last, you know, that they last as long as they have. So <laughs> So we all know, we're all learning. I'm learning how this process works. The committee is formed to come up with a plan. That plan goes to Board of Finance. It goes to, it goes to the Board of Selectmen. They agree to it. It goes to the Board of Finance. They agree to it. They recommend it to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen ultimately bring it to the town for a vote. I'm thinking, what if we did that? What if we got the town people involved a little sooner? We're all townspeople, too. I can argue almost pretty freely that sometimes the smartest people in the room aren't in the room. There's some very wise, learned people out there with all kinds of resources that we don't know about. If we went out there and they just said, here's the situation, folks. These buildings are really old. They need, they're gonna need some money. They're gonna need taxpayer dollars in order to maintain them. The fire departments can no longer have uh, bake sales and chicken barbecues and fishermen breakfasts and have raised enough money to maintain these buildings. It's just that there was a time when that was doable. It isn't anymore. So that's a that's a real thing. So what is the will of the people? Because it's up, oh, it's not us that says we need $15 million. It's the town saying, okay, you need 15 million bucks to build a new building. I don't know if that's the answer or not. I don't even know if that's the right answer. It might be spend five million dollars in three different places. I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm feeling that if you get out in front of these things early, involve everyone early, it's not going to be a bad thing. It, it may be a little bit messier. Sometimes, you know, you don't get anything done by committee. We all know that. And here we are in a committee trying to get something done. But I don't think it's wrong to get people involved early. So then they say, what the heck? Like, like, look at the schools, look at some of these other budgets. People go, what's going on? Where did these numbers come from? This is crazy. Talk about it now. It's stakeholder input and community input. No, there's no downside to that. There's no downside to that, Tyler. I don't think there's a downside. Zero. And, and you may not like what you hear. You may not. Right. We may not. It, it right. doesn't matter. But right, right. it doesn't matter. matter. I mean, no. The facts are the facts that we have to have buildings to house. The equipment we have to have places where our dedicated emergency service personnel can be safe and and and, and sleep and live comfortably so they can do the work that we're asking them to do. That's not that's not arguable. So there's no downside to public education. I do not think there is. The so. most important thing about that, uh, Andy, is that there is consensus amongst the group and a person or persons that represent the group. Yes, and you don't have, you know, opinions from the group that are contrary to what you're you're you know what they're saying. Right. We're gonna have to make sure that we're all on the same page before you get get to that point of doing a presentation, to everybody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I tried but, to do that part of the board of finance, so, mm -hmm. where I was not, I wasn't opining. I was just saying, here are the facts. Here are the three studies. All the studies from '93, and even the the the, the, the Kaiser book said. These buildings are old. If you you could keep patching them together, but they're eventually going to fail. And we're at that point. This is the like this is the year. So that can't really argue with that. So anyway, this is I'm not bringing this to a vote. But what is the feeling from this group? Would that have value? I'm hearing yes from. Do you think it would have value to get in front of the town unequivocally? Anybody? I mean, you're. What do you think? So I would say that I'm not sure a town meeting would be the right forum. What I would suggest is building up to a town meeting on whatever the solution ends up being. Hold uh, information center set sessions oh, at the library where people can come and you know they can they can hear the presentation. Like they'll have RFPs at that point. They can hear the different options. They can hear from you guys what the pros and cons are. And they can ask questions. I think if you're going to get any involvement, that's probably mm -hmm. the right way. I mean, they did that with the bridge, right? When they replaced the bridge, the state came in and they well, came the state like three right, times, right? right? What I'm suggesting is you would do something similar to that. And well, not a decision making body, just an informational well, statement. Right. An informational hearing, no, right. not a yeah. formal. An informal right. right. yeah. right. public but, forum. Right. Right. Well, one of the thoughts about doing it at a town meeting was that 
people are already going to be there to vote on something. Yeah. So before the town meeting starts, you do 30 minutes of a presentation. Yeah, and I'm saying that that has yeah, to deal. I don't think that's enough for for, the, for what you guys are tasked with doing and what little I know I can kind of catch up still. But right. what you guys are going to be proposing and what needs to be done, I think there needs to be well, we're town people. At this, at this point, sir, I wouldn't. We wouldn't be proposing anything. Well, if I just without meeting to to fund whatever you're going to. But do. that wouldn't happen. That's not. That, see, this is what, what I, town meeting. Do you want what to I'm vote? imagining is well, the next town meeting. Yeah, we're going to vote on. I don't oh. know whether or not whether or not we need a new dog pound. Or something. Oh, so use it. So I'm just saying, use the town meeting because you've already because there's postings and all those things cost money. Yeah. You have to put it in the paper. You got to do this, and it's like a thousand bucks. Hey, what if so, you look at the informational? Yeah, public information meeting that you just put on the website, your Facebook, Facebook was get it out there. I think all those and, and time you have you have one have one during the day, have one at night. I wouldn't even put a time limit on. I think a half hour. I think, yeah, I think that you got you guys are gonna ask way too many questions for a half right. hour. I think you have separate, yeah. just totally separate. An informational get together. Come hear what we what we have to say. What the findings. I like that. I, I think it's. Yes. A, I, but I mean, the reason you do it at the town meeting because. You're not duplicating you've all got of that. Yeah. Audience, all you've right. got to have you've got a captured audience. You've got a captured audience, and you have to. You're going to have a meeting. You got to post it. In, 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 I mean, mean, it's it's it costs yeah, no, yeah, money. It's, That's it's, the only reason. Yeah. In order in order to sort of maximize our budget, <coughs> you so, do it say that. when the meeting's already been posted. So yeah. Yeah. And you do, and it is. It's just information. We're not asking you to do anything. We're not asking for a decision. Here's the situation with with firehouses. A committee's been formed. Is what we're looking at. Here's what we know. Uh, here's what we're considering here's what's point. Yeah, that's right and here are just some you know we have like five or six courses of action and here they are we just wanted you to know yeah and that way it's not a surprise when it does come up and you might get great ideas and you might have people saying yes i want my taxes to go up 500 dollars a year build a five-story firehouse and an emergency operations center and new town hall and school put them all one big old school tower what, what? school <clears throat> tower sure it'll pick up all four of that yeah. all, get it all done I definitely don't think we're close to that yet, though. I don't think we are either. Okay. This is just an. Uh, this is we're just kicking the ideas around. But I, 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 I either of your suggestions, either informational sessions or doing something at the beginning. I think all, all of those. I, yeah. You bring up a very good point. Do you want to? But right want, now, we're going to have all. We have the same questions that people are going to have, kind of. We don't have any. There, people are going to have questions. They're going to be like, we're going to have every answer. Yes, two very distinct separate subjects, however. Right. One is the existing conditions which we're dealing with tonight regarding the firehouses. But then you have the study that's going to come back. I think mm -hmm. that everything you said, I agree 100%. With. There's nothing, zero, no downside to public education ever, no matter what. However, maybe after that study comes back, Right. Yeah, I'm not doing this like next week. No, I'm not suggesting yeah. that. <laughs> I think we the study yeah. that you have, get all yeah. of our oh, speech together. Exactly. Okay. And someone who has a lot of time on their hands can build a PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> for, each, for each presentation. I agree. Um, and it's no, just I, I, get, get people there. I, I'm, I'm, I was asking more of the of sort of a, what do you think of the oh, concept? Sounds yeah. Good. I think we should do this more often. Absolutely. Do I was talking to uh, I was talking to some uh, people after the board selected meeting, and we both sort of agree that. The town meetings are sort of stilted. You get there and it's all like, here's what you're going to decide on. You've got 40 people in there. 40? Maybe like 25. Yeah. Right. And, and there's six. Yeah. The yeah. two sides of the issue are there and that's it. The two hard ones are packed with you. Yeah. Right. There's your 40. And then you're fine. <laughs> but I said, wouldn't it be? And then again, yes, it's, and you were saying we don't have answers to those questions, but maybe someone out there does. There are, like you just said, oh, we have fewer pipe you can donate. Now, that's a small example. But who knows who's in the audience that might say, hey, that's interesting to me. Gosh, I built 15 firehouses in my life. Or I renovated, you know, like, sorry, you that, that could be a double-edged sword. I mean, of course. You know what? It's supposed to be. As a bridge, all three the, there. The bridge, uh, no, yeah. you don't <laughs> think you're worried about people fishing and getting yeah, answered. Yeah, on the car there to well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, ultimately, you're not going to well, be able to make right. everyone yeah. happy. Yeah. No. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. learning what people are are, nice are all about, nice like like yeah. Tyler said, yeah. public education nice is bad. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be, you know, if you're gonna be in this hole, you gotta be kind of thick skin and take a little heat and let people say, "Yeah, hey, you're neat." Yeah. No, and it's also a time for explaining. Yes, because, you know, a lot of a lot of folks, you know, I I'll do the quick example. For 20 years, I was a chief. I'll come to the board of finance and budget presentation, and 
inevitably, and at the change during an election year, somebody was sit there and say, there's paid people? I'm like, yes, it's 1967. <gasps> really? I didn't know that. Yeah, right. It's a constant education process all the time. Right. All the time. So and these things are just, stuff like that is just awesome. And and I think you do it, and guess what? You got to do it again. And then you probably have to do it again. Yes. And then you got to do it on the website, and you got to have a little yeah. weapon. But yeah. so what? I like the idea of having them at specific points in our process. Like, we could have one right now to explain the problem, because like Bob yes. said, at the meeting right. last he time, he know. had no idea what right. was going on. Right. And now he actually understands it, which so I think is an important point. That's what I'm Once thinking. we get this survey done, that's another really clear point at which we could give an informational session yeah, because so well. we could explain so, all of that. Yeah. And then once we make the decision or the board of selectmen makes Absolutely. the decision, right. we could give benchmark progress reports of how things are going right. and yep. that i can definitely see my one concern is calling town meetings like you said it's not cheap and it's also not really budgeted very well so we have to be careful of that because the money for doing that has to come from somewhere well, if you, but adding a light item on the doesn't cost any more than the notice no but we can't call our own Right. Well, if no, you, no, 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 no. I'm not suggesting we do. Yeah. I'm just saying we just do a like information system. Have to, yeah. You know, I like having them at the library. I like that sure. idea. I think yeah. that's but fantastic. nobody goes. It's hard enough to get people that have signed up to be out of board. We have a hard time getting people to come here. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's you know. hosted. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, one person, how many meetings? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in all my years, that's this is pretty right. typical. Right. It is. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, to have to, to tack on that's more, I'm done. to tack on these more individual meetings. I mean, you know, I mean, a board of selectmen, you know, we had four people show up out of seven. Board of finance, you had to see two alternates. People that said they were going to be there and elected to be there aren't showing up because it's challenging. It's a worthwhile exercise to go through. If one person shows up, there's one more person that is more educated than when they came. Right? And you can That's also, yeah, and there's always going to be people saying, I didn't know about it. No one told me. But, and then you can say, we had these informational sessions. Yeah. They were posted. Yeah, you yeah, could have yeah, chosen yeah. to come, et cetera. And, but I also don't see any reason why we can't do both. Well, you couldn't have the library yeah, right. sessions and Absolutely. for any town and, meeting that's correct. And have it on, have a, have a webinar, whatever you want to call it, on the website. You can do it all. I mean, I, but I, and, I'm not, and I think this is broader than just this issue. I think a lot of things should be yeah. talked yeah. about that way. I think there's an awful lot of stuff that I agree do early in the process. 100% I think it's excellent. Cool. And I, I think we have to understand that we... We want to genuinely welcome public input. Absolutely. If, if anyone remembers the informational sessions or forums the school board has for the new school, if you attended those sessions and you asked a question, typically there were like four or five board of ed members there. Mm -hmm. and you, you would get pounced on as a person from the public asking a simple question. Right. Wow, well, didn't you know that the Board of Ed met six times on that issue? Yes, and, and, and we, we have to avoid that. We I want agree. we want the input. We want to find out how the town feels about one department, two departments, yep. you know, build, well, how many buildings. We want that input. We want our consultant to see that. We, 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 we don't want him addressing us and the fire corporations. We want him to see how our town views this issue. That will be an important part of his job with yes. us. Um, but that's not what always happens. What often happens is the people who feel there are experts will crowd out public participation. Yeah. And, I, and I hope we don't do that. I, 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 I'm guilty of that. I mean, I, I, when I... Anyone who's close to a subject is. Yeah, well, I'll, yeah, but I, when I, mean, I first started thinking, I said, well, you know, we have all these meetings. All you got to do is get online. I started looking around. I was saying, geez, the people that, like I just said, the people that... That, that ran for it and got they don't even show up. So how do we expect our townspeople to to want to do that? We so want to welcome them. I think we have get the boy. Again, this is Dr. Speed. This was just I wanted to see how you uh, the people in this room felt about it. I'm gonna work the board of selectmen side and say, look, I think we should have oh, I think we should have we should have a, a standard line item on every town meeting to have a public hearing about whatever the heck's going on in town, just as information. Not that <clears throat> Just so people can ask questions about it. And, and say, what's and the, the study does come back, it should be 
published publicly. Absolutely, this is right. right. An announcement. This is hey, right. This thing came back. Right. This is what it says. This Read it right. yourself. But if, you know, but to send that out without any preamble wouldn't make sense to anybody. Yeah. I mean, the last three you just go to a file cabinet. We can't have so, that happen. You right. got to be public. So anyway, I'm digging. All I said was great, 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 great progress. Great idea. Okay. Great, great progress. Just to to build a little bit on what Peter was talking about as far as the school building committee, there were I think ten informational sessions. The attendance at those things was really anemic, and they had free bets up, and almost every one. And it was only primarily parents who have kids in the school with mm -hmm. children. So what is it about what we're dealing with here that affects everybody in town that's going to pique their curiosity to come to these sessions? Homeowners insurance. Homeowners insurance. Sure. Public safety. There's if you no get time. hurt, you want an, you, you need a ride to the hospital in an ambulance. Um, these yeah. are the things that... that are probably going to register with you. They will. But one of the big things is you just getting start, the word out. Yeah, yes. But if you just start talking about buildings, firehouses, equipment, you don't know you know, this. The thing is, you have to bridge the gap either because there's... How does this affect There's that? an inherent expectation of public safety that people think occurs, want to occur, think they're paying for it. Versus the reality. It's not every TV show on every night. Yeah, it's just the way it is. And if we can close that gap and make, you know, have, again, if 10 people come, that's 10 or more people that know more than right. the king, you know. But they might talk to three or four each. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. spreads it out. It's all, which is a good thing. That is a good thing. It's all good. Thing. The more the better. I think. I'll talk to at least eight. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> and get it out publicly on the website ad nauseum. And that's, you can never be accused of not, uh, you know, letting people know what's going on. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so anyway, that's, that's my thought. And uh, I'll get it. So work in progress. It'll have to be, you know, got a couple of selectmen that will have to be convinced that that's the right thing to do. But, I mean, I really like to see a full public hearing half an hour before every town meeting to talk about whatever issues are at hand. And, uh, and whoever is uh, the, the leader of that, whatever it is, we have things going on and you know, planning and zoning that people might want to know about. Once in a while, when the rules change and things that are going to happen. So, uh, home, 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 home occupations. Home occupations. We're going to be doing a, not really germane to this committee, but we're going to, we're going to be introducing a, uh, um, a change to home occupations and land use. I think that should be at a public hearing at a town meeting and not just at the planning and zoning meeting. Because mm -hmm. who knows? Those things are boring. Nobody wants to go to those. Like that one? Yeah. Only, only yeah. There, there will be a public hearing. It's in, it's in discussion. Um, it's, a, it's a draft right now of uh, home occupations. And, you know, it's where we're actively discussing it. Eventually, we'll go to a town. We'll go to a public hearing and planning and zoning. And then we'll go to a town meeting. I think it should be presented as a public hearing at a town meeting way before the vote gets called. That's just me. I am a big fan of public participation early on. I couldn't so, agree more. The problem is getting them to participate. That you know? That's well, now I guess we're the next planning and zoning. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Be careful. You're going to hardly you're going to go office. Pretty soon you're going to be sitting on one of the other side. Nobody wants that. <laughs> but I do think. But but it's like, I think these things take time. That you're right. If the first time you have a public area, nobody goes, fine. And the next time, a couple of people go. Well, the fifth time, people might say, hey, you know what? And then maybe you say, hey, maybe we'll have a coffee and donuts. And then everybody's. If people believe that they will be heard and that their voice is going to be active and, people, and they can ask questions without fear of being censored, they might want to go. If they think that, oh, well, I'm just going to get fucked at, nobody wants to go to that. Right. Yeah, and you respectful and receptive when you're keeping those types of things. There you go. That's right. Absolutely right. 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 If you don't, then right. again, so we, we don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. So, anyway, I'm done. Yeah. And you also want to solicit suggestions. Of course. Absolutely. Right. Have you considered this? No, thanks. Let me write that down. Well, appreciate it. At the end, at the end of the presentation, you say you're up on the 
Lord, here's an email address, whether yeah. it's yours or somebody's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any send, thoughts, comments, please, ideas? Send here, please. Please send them. We'd love to steal your ideas and make them our own. Yep. If you want to be anonymous, fine. If you don't want to be, we'd love to have your name and stuff, but if you want to be anonymous, do that too. You love a black on the guns. All right. Ooh. We did it for the library, didn't we? With you the papers. You the downspout for five grand. <laughs> I'll apply to accept it. Okay, item D. Uh, I asked Mike D'Amato through types to do a proposal for a mini study. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. Uh, yeah. The yeah. price went up from what he said, so. Yeah. We're doing the other one. We're, we do, do we're doing the other one. No, this was just more information. Again, he, he didn't, it didn't take him that long to do it. Twenty five hundred bucks. He'll do some stuff. He'll get all the information. Uh, I got to Google some of the terms he's used there. Yeah, I, isn't I, it the same information that we're going to get in the other study? It is. It is probably the same information. It's coming going. from the same data set. It's exactly right. It's the same so. data set, and with another. I don't. I'm not saying we need it or don't need it. It was just more information. Another little tool in our toolkit that we can it sounds um, great if we could just do that but I no i don't think that that's an option yeah well finance was not no interested. they weren't really that interested but i had already asked him so here we hear it is but now we have uh -oh. well, I, some, I like to think i'm in the business but i i don't know with some of these three Stuart, what's kernel density <laughs> you're a gis Expert, what is kernel density? Perform kernel density analysis to identify areas of high intensity of emergency calls. What's kernel density? I, Do you I, need I have never heard that term. Okay. That's well, now you have. Create isochrome that's buzzer that's to yes. demonstrate yeah, coverage errors. Well, actually, just you're an ESRI expert. So you're to do with color. Yeah. No, it's chromes. With yeah. an isochromes. Is it M or N? N, as in the MC. Isochrome. Create isochrome. Isochromes to demonstrate coverage errors. You, ever, you, know, you seriously never heard those terms before? I'm speculating. I suspect it's kind of like contour lines. Yeah, like a, He's, on a map. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I suspect. I think we're going to have to school him then. When he's talking to people that... Well, I mean, he's, a, he's an Esri GIS specialist. He's going to tell me. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. I think we're, we're simple. They people. might. Look, when you're, when you're talking to lay people, you've got to... Yeah. All right. That, that's all it's there for, just to show you that... There yeah. is there is something besides that, and it's a thing. If it was free, I would say absolutely do it. Well, yeah. it's better, but it's a turn over your box. I don't know if it was free. You're going to get that together, study. Uh, so, no, I am yeah. not. I am not. Yeah. I guess there, I'm not yeah. for it. It does, was just information. Options there. Options are there. Yeah, just point for something to look at. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 All right. Well, we'll yeah. Old business is just the online yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, so the current one that we're on now is uh, ESO is the name of the company. We've been with them approximately two years. That one we can more e easily harvest personal responses off of that All one. Right. Well, let's look at just two years. Two years. We don't want to, I don't want to try to burden the, the group here. So the, two, the two, three just, two years? It's just queries. Well, the, the, the call data is easily done 17 years. Yeah. It's all the same. So that's been good. It's only the personal responses would be limited to two right. years. Well, well extra how would we do five years of call data, two years of personnel? Is that fair? Yes. I'm not going to ask. What, uh, what do you want? We'll take take it one at a time. Right. The call data from the dispatch center. You can get how many, I can give you a number, how many calls we had over two years. You can drill down into where they are, time of day, EMS, basic life support, ALS, structure fire, car fires, fire alarm, all the way down the line. How much data do you want is the question. Well, how much data does the committee need to make an informed decision? Up well, to you guys. Well, we want the call volume. We'd like to know what types of calls they were. Um, so number of calls, types. So would that be by year or month? There are variations. Yeah, I would say there are variations up and down. Yep. Right. Um, you know, you I don't the yearly averages. All right. You know, visible as well. Let me do I don't think I need to know can one drill down that far. All right. Yeah, right. So we have number of calls. So I'm going to pick January. You had ten calls. Uh, you had types of calls. So you had two uh, structure fires, eight ambulance. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I need to know what equipment went out there. Is that relative to us? Is that going to make? Yes. It okay, is, so it is because right. it's ultimately going to have a well, really extensive of required apparatus. You, right. can, you can look at your apparatus replacement plan based on the frequency of use of an apparatus. Yes. So it's, 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 it's relevant. Okay. All right. It's so now we have every two years. So we have number of calls, like types of calls, like equipment, where they, they where they went, went. Um, where they went. Where TR. Yeah. Well, are we talking in town calls only or regionally as well? Regionally as well, because that's an important that's an important thing that, that the Wellington Fire Department does is supporting other towns. Yes. Sure. As part of them. So location inside and outside of town. Yeah. What else? Anything more than that? One thing we've been starting to count and it takes some doing to go further back is mutually received. Mm -hmm. So we, we yes. typically count. We now should go to another town. How many times did these other towns come, come to us? us? Yeah, yeah I would, think that would yes. be really good information, that, especially for the board of finance. That came up. Uh, how, many, one how many times did you use ALS, helicopters, all that? So you can yeah. drill down where you want. All right. So if we have type, um, type of call, uh, the number of calls, the types of calls, the equipment sent, the location, Mutual aid received. Start with those things, and then I don't know. So then you can well, see all other stuff that you think well, would be interesting. Throw it. How many years of dispatch record do you like? We're, we know we're locking on two years for personnel, but who attends? I say five. How many about five? Years? Five years. The only thing that's getting basic there, we I, I don't know that we really want or should get actual location of calls. Yeah, I can see that. That's a different privacy. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand for medical. Yeah, but how about fire? Now, it's uh, a privacy issue. You don't need it. You don't need yeah. the addresses. So the, the road. Sure. So there's a couple parts that we can redact the house number. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Okay. I would suggest at least leaving the the road the, the uh, road name in there. Just yeah. some context. Yeah, you can leave right the road name. At least give us in the heat maps. Uh, each address typically has a Latin long on it. So that starts generating your dots around the map. And then if you have dots top, stacked on top of each other, you make the dot bigger. Yep. It comes up, you look at high chase, you're going to see a big dot down there. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of calls here. Sure. But also FedEx and uh, the truck stop, you know, things like that will give you a... So yeah, we'll, we'll redact the street number. Um, and probably nature of call. I mean, we'll have type of call, we won't have nature of call. That's right, that won't come through. Right, so be ALS that's or be ALS. The nature call gets into, you know, uh, psychiatric. Or yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't want to know. Stuff like that. We just want to know whether it's an ALS or the brush truck. If, you know? Is it an ALS or BLS call? That's what ALS call. Uh, just kind of thing. And I don't know. What else? ALS is just the ALS, ALS, just the ALS, the ALS be a paramedic comes with the info. Ah, I see. So you'll see that. All right, no street numbers. Right, good enough. All right, What? how, when do you think that would happen? Um, typically, those are exported without like, the raw data is in Excel. Okay. If you have Excel, and then it depends how far down the line you want to go with uh, 
some analysis of that, the, the, the along with the tables and uh, charts, things like that. You can start doing yeah, all sorts of pretty, pretty graphs. Uh, no, Excel's fine. I think just gonna have we have for the next meeting. I mean, I think the kind of thing that people are going to ask is that you know that, that there was you know there were two hundred calls and a hundred of them were ambulance and a hundred of them were fire and over two years. You know, right. I'm just I'm just I'm just pretty. I'm thinking of a month actually. I was thinking of a month. But whatever it is, I mean, people are just going to want to know some fairly high level numbers or be great. We want the detailed information if someone asks. Because they say, well, how many calls are you talking about a month? It's like, I want to be able to say so many of these, so many of those. Like All right. For, for whole fire corporation. For, for, for everybody. Well, we're dual response. If it's in town, we go to the same calls together. Yeah. It's the, every so it is full. There's only so many places. Minor exceptions of a service right. call or officer call. But generally speaking, calls of Wellington and both departments are covered. If it's out of town, that's where it gets yeah. separate. But so that's the case for ambulance yeah. calls as well? Yes. Yeah. One single one. Yeah. So if it's dangerous. Yeah. Every person we can get on the scene is better for everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. In terms of yeah. like information or health care information, I don't want We've been doing control. that for what, 17 yeah. years? Yeah. As long as we've been starting to answer. Yeah. 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 A, yeah. In town, we get called all yeah. together. Yeah. Because a fire truck always goes with it. I'm saying fire truck. I know that's not the right term, but always goes with the ambulance, right? I mean, pretty much all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you know, has a service truck. The uh, service truck, right? Yeah. Goes with. I mean, when my power. parents died, is that the service truck? Mm -hmm. They were So that, that's typically the vehicle that comes unless it's out of service. Yeah. Something else to go. Yep. Yeah. And there are times where, you know, nobody goes. It's the two paid personnel. And yeah. That's it. Or. Even worse, two paid people are out of call, out of town on another yeah. call, and, nobody, and yeah. still nobody goes. And you can't see only ambulance that shows up. Right. Yeah. So there are days like that. Um, yeah. And again, the caveat that is not unique to Wilmington. It's a, no, it's a, it's true. It's a it's a regional, no. statewide, national problem. Absolutely. All right. No, that's okay. that brought in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. All right. Correspondence, uh, it was just the uh, the, the Teich thing and uh, the RFP from Mike and the scope of work. Uh, present to speak, uh, I don't see anybody around. Um, next meeting place would be 12 September, 6.30 p.m., 18.30, lower level town office building. I'm not sure I'm going to be here. So, who's the vice chair? Well, and then action items, I think the only thing that we can get the call locks so that you can get them together, throw some stuff on there. And I think they may trickle out as a well. How do you want to distribute this to you? You'll send them off. Wait, I'm confused. What's the date of it? September 12th. Did I, did I get the date? Yeah, it's second Thursday. Second, second yes, yes, yeah, the 12th and the 26th. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'll be traveling that day. Yeah. Yeah. Any each of these reports. Come with an explanation. The example being if you did time of day by hour, so you have to grab to go from you know, zero to 23 kind of thing, and you'll see at four in the morning, there's very few calls. And oh, gee, you know, why do you need people to go? You know, and this is the argument back when we had nighttime staff. Well, you can't get anybody at four in the morning, they're getting ready to go to work typically. Right. And so, yes, the number of calls is lower at four in the morning, but the available personnel is lower at four in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, if you simply look at Oh, gee, you know, one o'clock to five o'clock, that's pretty sloppy. Yeah, you don't need to yeah. do that, but you don't have the people around to go to, you know, a lot of those calls. And sure. So, a lot of them have explanations. So, what we've seen over time is, you know, the time of day one moves a lot from, you know, then how far you want to expand the peak, you're like eight to five. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the day of week, it varies some, but it's not consistent enough to say, Oh, weekends are so much busier than a weekday or vice right, right, right. versa. Uh, but you'll see that as you you know look at the data. It's going to go up and down some. Uh, I was, was going to say that we so we we do a lot of data analysis at work, and we went back and we looked at full moon cycles and to match. Really, the call volume. It's a real thing. Yeah. It is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the sure. types of calls. Yeah, and that's things. Is that true in the hospital still? Full moons? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. It's the old wives' tale. 
Coast Guard for that. I don't know. We, we see it. There's been like actual studies, like evidence, like, yeah. like true studies done for how for hospital about the hospital, but more more violence occurs in Seabar. Most beautiful in the last couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the biggest blue moon. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Should we adjourn? Yeah. Oh. Second. All in favor? Uh, all right. Right. Thank you all. All right. Can you kill it there, James? Thank you. Stop recording.